Hello, it's uh, Mark Chris from Memorial Sloan Kettering. I'm uh, speaking today about a recent meeting I attended of uh, thoracic oncology practitioners uh, in the uh, New York metropolitan area, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. Uh, once a year, we get together, uh, have academic lectures and, and, and trade cases uh, to see how we practice and, and to uh, share our thoughts. And this year uh, was uh, uh, a great meeting, great to be back in, uh, in person. And uh, I want to talk about a few topics that came up. And I think the overall theme for the meeting was this, that our job has gotten a lot better. Uh, the outcomes for our patients have gotten uh, a lot better, but our job has gotten a lot harder. Uh, and I think that was a theme throughout the day, more choices uh, and, and blessedly more things to choose from. Uh, Two big issues uh, to bring up in uh, some of the sessions that happened there. One was this growing movement to do neoadjuvant treatment. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. It's so helpful to know whether or not a tumor in an individual is actually benefiting from the therapy. Um, the drugs given neoadjuvantly are much better tolerated. Uh, and then there is the chance of that you know, intermediate uh, endpoint, short-term endpoint of looking at what happens in the resection specimen uh, and using that as a sign about the degree of benefit from a, a, a treatment. Um, I think there's a lot of data that the uh, treatments are effective. Uh, some practical things that came up that day. Uh, one is the uh, current need uh, still to make a decision on the best treatment for a patient have the multidisciplinary group at your institution uh, get together to make a decision for a patient at the time of diagnosis. Uh, I'll put to you, there is absolutely no evidence that any neoadjuvant therapy makes a patient resectable that isn't resectable or makes a patient operable that isn't operable. Uh, and you need to make that decision. And what it kind of boiled down to in our discussions was you need to ask the thoracic surgeon can this patient go to the operating room today? And if the answer is yes, then that patient is clearly a candidate for new adjuvant therapy. If the answer is not sure, or I don't know, or I'm not willing to take the patient, they should get concurrent chemotherapy and radiation. So um, the need to put the surgeon in control, let them make that decision. Uh, but unless the patient can have surgery, then it, it's not a good idea and you should use concurrent chemotherapy and radiation. Other issues that came up is number one, this idea about after neoadjuvant therapy, quotes doing a mediastinal restaging and just making a decision there. There's no data that that's helpful. Uh, and, uh, the surgery, and as we know, uh, radiographic um, changes are not uh, acceptable to decide whether or not somebody's benefited from treatment. And also please remember that mediastinoscopy and uh, EBUS, they're sampling, they're not dissections, they're not treatment. So you can, e you can easily uh, underestimate or overestimate the amount of disease a patient would have. Other important issue, the need to do NGS testing on all these patients at the time of diagnosis. Please go to the package insert for uh, nivolumab and uh, chemotherapy for the neoadjuvant setting. You must know that the patient is EGFR and ALK negative. You need that information up front to know if that's the right regimen for the patient. How do you do that? In 2022, it's doing NGS testing. Uh, so I urge you to make sure all these patients get uh, NGS testing. Um, the other um, uh, example of uh, good results, good outcomes, but more decisions for us and harder job is with the upfront therapy of patients with uh, stage four uh, lung cancers that don't have a target. Um, there are now almost a dozen regimens that are approved. How do you choose among those regimens? And actually it became quite clear there are no head-to-head -head trials. I put to you there shouldn't be any head-to-head -head trials for this because uh, all the regimens, when you look at the data, have been quite comparable. So I think the consensus was at the meeting, how do you decide? It's based on what is available at your site in your practice. I think the regimen for which you're most comfortable using one of the approved regimens 
uh, and the regimen that best fits with your institutional needs, institutional priorities, and availability is the one to choose. So good news, better outcomes for patients, uh, people living longer, people living better. A uh, harder time for us because we have to make a lot more decisions, but hey, that's what we're there for.